The Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? Well, I cannot believe it. All of you guys that have been listening to this show for the last six years, I want to thank you guys for tuning in. It is crazy. Uh, Deloy, one of our uh, techs in the back, told me last week that this show has been on the air for six years. That means I'm extremely old. (laughs) (laughs) And what's also crazy is I have Garrett Beeler uh, back in studio. You know him from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, Monday night live. He he was teaching there for how many years was it? Uh, It was about nine years. You're really old. That was a long time ago. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I know. I've been our church just turned seven, so I, I started there sixteen years ago. Vision Church in yeah, Irvine. Vision City Church, yeah, in Irvine. That's right. Yeah, you've been doing a great <laughs> job. What a great job! Wow, dude, amazing. well done. No, I'm I'm stoked. God's uh, God's been doing awesome things, and a cu- we just got picked up on three more stations. So God's just He's opening it up, and it's cool to have awesome guests on like you, and have Sean in the studio, and then all of you know musicians and artists and. We've had several pastors from here, uh, Calvary pastors as well, just uh, bringing uh, the gospel. So it's been epic. But I got news for you. I, and I didn't want to talk to you before the show, but we are coming to your church tomorrow. <laughs> Me, oh, yeah. my wife, All right. the triplets, my son Asher. What time does it start? 1030 in the morning. We will be there. And, All right. it, and it's in the park? Yeah, we do an outside festival-style church, mm-hmm. and uh, it's been great. We have great weather lined up for tomorrow, too, so great great day to stop by we were going to come last week but i don't know what happened but we're coming and i think we're actually we're going to bring uh crystal's dad he's going to start coming to church with us there great so look forward to we're we're excited because we've been looking for a new church to go to that has child care you know and and you need child care we have to (laughs) Yeah. Well, because you know we were going down to john randall's and Uh they're doing they're meeting on sunday mornings in the um san clemente uh the outlets uh, the outlets yeah but Dude, my kids running around uh, uh, a parking lot, and they love the outlets, you know, because they always got sure. every time we go there, it's like for the it's unicorn party or some other, you know, <laughs> event or Z Pizza. Oh yeah, so there you go. It's oh, a great, it's a great spot. Yeah. So anyway, they'll get distracted, and and I'm not trying to watch kids. I'm trying to get fed. Yeah. Well, they, you know, <laughs> everyone's trying to you know make the best of a difficult situation, yeah. you know. But we're really fortunate. We got a great outdoor area. And because we have such a large space to work with, it's uh, great to have childcare, you know, provided for you know parents to be able to have a, you know, forty-five minute break. Dude, yeah, because you need that time to just to 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 just sit down and focus, you know, and, and hear. Really, I know, I know. Ruth, Ruth, and I were just talking about it because we have four kids, yeah. you know, and so when I am up there teaching, Ruth is the one taking care of the kids, and she's like, you know. It's really important for me to actually go to church when yeah. I'm at church. Yeah. And so, you know, my, my parents will hop in, my sister, you know, some close friends to try to give give her a break. But you're absolutely right. It's really challenging when you have little kids it, to try to go to church. And it's for like, – because I'm, I'm, I'm able to study more, obviously, but for Crystal – got to get her somewhere and i'm like pick where do you wherever you want to go she loves listening to john randall she loves listening to you and i'm like all right let's uh i don't really care for either one of them but you know whatever you want to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no I, yeah, that's I, great I, I love it i love both of you guys well that's so. great i look forward to uh to, to seeing you guys there tomorrow sick hey um it is also uh ironic that when i first got saved i was starting to you know listen about like i was going to a monday night study you were like the pastor that I was listening to every week and I was growing. And it's so funny because the last time you were on the show, you were saying that you were starting a series um, on John the Baptist. Right. And it's the He Must Increase, I Must Decrease series. Yep. And it's so interesting that um, I've been going through it. And literally, I texted you the other day, but, you know, everything that I've been going through over the last six months and the listeners that have been hearing, I've been going through this like crazy storm, this wilderness experience of whatever God's doing in my life. But go, when I started going through this series, I'm literally putting it in and my mouth is dropping. I'm literally like, this guy l- did this Bible study. Like sometimes when you go to church, they're like, oh my gosh, that pastor, like he, he nailed a couple things. Literally everything in the Bible study that's you're speaking in every single Bible study, I'm it's like it's it's speaking to me about certain things in my life or it's confirming 
And it's just, it's like you did the whole series for me. And I'm on seat number four right now. So okay. thank you for doing that for me. Yeah, hey, you got three <laughs> You got three left. You got four, five, and six. It's I, a six-part series. Wow, I, that's great. I'm hooked. Well, I'm you know, hooked. it's probably because you're so much like John the Baptist in the way you look and the way you communicate <laughs> uh, that it just is uh, apropos for you. But that's you have cool. the beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. That's awesome, Ryan. No, it's man. good to hear. I'm, I'm really pumped. But I just think it's ironic that uh, here I am again. Now we're back. Because, you know, God yeah. uses what I've learned is, and you know, um, God uses different people to speak in your life at certain times. Sure. As pastors and different people you listen to on the radio. You know, Greg Glory was really hitting it for a while with me when I was um, doing a lot of stretching and stuff. Uh, and, and, you know, like I do stretching and, and weights in the morning before I go skate. But, um, and then Jeff Johnson, God was using Jeff Johnson for a while. It's all through K, you know, I'm listening to K Wave. So it's like every 30 minutes, bam, bam, yeah. bam. Yeah, you got a great lineup of teachers. And I think that the word of God, because it's living, it's powerful, mm -hmm. it's led by the Holy Spirit, that it can meet you exactly where you're at, the, in a place that maybe nobody else would ever know that you're there, but God. Yep, you know, exactly. And, and it's really cool how God transcends all of that and is so concerned with every little detail of our life to, to take that time that we give to him to really minister to us. And so that's that's pretty cool. That's that work of the Holy Spirit. And before we start taking questions, I am going to say your brother, too. Your brother's also on the station. Yes. And God, I was listening to him. He turned out. I'm like, there, there, there's the little Beeler. So I, so I started listening and it was like bang bang dude he was just hitting it and i'm like oh he spoke to me that's awesome <laughs> yeah well, you know what little beeler's not little beeler anymore he's not dude he's, he's not. big beeler i know dude I know. He, he got all buff and oh, so oh, he, big? He's, he's, he's 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 bigger than i am <laughs> are you serious yeah he he's totally yoked out so he he's not baby brother beeler anymore oh i think gosh. he's bigger than both of his older brothers can he take you uh, no, <laughs> I'm like, can I say that? No. <laughs> I still Always. have older brother. Always. Okay, so check it out. We're gonna we're gonna take a bunch of calls tonight. That's just we're gonna open up the phone lines. But um I wanna give out the number right now. It is uh triple eight five six four six one seven three. Triple eight five six four six one seven three. So we're gonna be taking questions on anything tonight. It's all good. Call us uh now and uh Present your questions. So I got a phone call from a nine-year-old the other day. It was uh, the it was the the girlfriend and the boyfriend. It was the boyfriend's nine-year-old and got on the phone with me and asked me a question. And I want to ask you the questions just so you can get the, the juices flowing in this studio. So she said, if, if God is all-powerful, then why is there all the, the cancer – and people getting hurt, as in, you know, whatever, like, you know, it could be like with, with you know, crime and all the, like, all this, like, evil. If mm. there is a God that is all powerful, why is there so much evil in the world? Yeah, you know, I, I heard somebody answer this question who is very, very intellectual, very spiritual guy. And he, he narrowed it down to man's free will, to man's choice. Mm -hmm. And that ultimately was an act of, of man being able to choose for himself who he would have relationships with, how he would conduct himself. And he went on to communicate how it was a matter of love. And if God is actually searching for relationship with his creation, and if we as individuals have the ability to make our own choices, we're not robots. We, we God's not looking for a robotic relationship. I know when we met our wives, you know, we wanted them to love us because that was their choice, not because we forced them into it or because they lost a bet or because they were some type of robot and that they would, you know, do everything that we asked them to do and that they would say that they loved us and treat us a certain way because we had control over them. It was actually something that they chose and that's what made it so special. And so when God created man, he gave him the ability to make choices uh, when God created man, he gave them uh, gave him the ability to to make decisions for himself. And consequence, uh, you know, yeah. the consequences of that meant that you would either choose to do that which was right or you would choose to do that which was wrong. And so when you go back to the very first man that was created, Adam, mm -hmm. and Paul talks about this in Romans as well, you know, God, yes, is all powerful. But man has a, has a freedom to choose. And when man chose to sin against God, 
sin entered this world and the consequences of that sin. And because God gave man that ability, it also he also gave him the responsibility of having to deal with the consequences for his actions. And so when you look at the evil that's in the world today, this isn't the way that God created the world to be. Uh, when you look at the terrible diseases and people dying at early ages and people doing terrible things, you're you're actually looking at a perverted, sinful lifestyle of choices yeah, exactly. that are being yeah. that are being carried out in a way that, that's terrible. And so, which is sin, which is, which is sin. And yeah. so, what is happening though? The good news though is that because God loved the world so much. He sent his only son, Jesus, to die on the cross for the sins of the world so that through faith in Jesus, you might be saved from your sins. So the consequences of one man's actions, you know, like you send athletes out to the Olympic Games and that one individual athlete represents an entire nation. And so, too, Adam represented this entire team called mankind. And through one man's loss, they all lost. And so now we're reaping the, the, the terrible fruits of that. And so God is all-powerful. God created the world to be perfect. He created man to live in perfect harmony with him. But he also gave man the freedom to choose. And so man chose to sin and then had to bear the burden of that. And that's why Jesus had to come and pay the price for the sins of the world so that he might bring his creation back to him. And that when this earth passes away, there'll be a new heaven, there'll be a new earth, free from the cancers, free from the diseases, free from the COVIDs, free from the death. You'll see what life was meant to be. And that's what we look forward to. And only an almighty God can make that happen. And with that said, in Genesis, it says that Adam, who you're referring to, says that he walked with God. God originally created us, created mankind to have fellowship. Like they walked, they talked, they were together together. So there was there was open communication together until the 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 decision that was made in the garden because of free will and thank God mm-hmm. for free will because we don't want it. Who wants to be told what to do? Who wants to be a robot? Because then if if we we're all robots, then we'd be like, well, how come God to give us free will? You know, and it's all about free will, and it's you choose whether you want to love God or you don't. You choose if you want to go live your life and do whatever you want to do. Or you want to be connected to the creator of the universe and have a relationship and be forgiven and have your name written in the book of life and have eternity, like you said. So when you die one day, you you live, basically. Because you don't ever die. You just Your soul never dies, your spirit. Yeah, and I think the hard thing is, is that people want to live however they would like to live. Mm-hmm. And they want to do whatever they want to do, but they don't necessarily want the consequences yeah, of those exactly. actions. And that's the thing. So, you know, God created man, like you said, to walk with him. He gave He gave us his commandments. He gave us directives in the scriptures of how we might live pure and holy before him, how we might live in communion with God. So we have that given to us, and then it's our choice to be able to either do it God's way or to do it our way. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is yeah. death, yeah. Yeah. And, that, and there's no way around it. And, and, and so as much as we'd like to say, oh, there's an almighty God out there and there's evil in this world, well, you're looking at people choosing to do what is wrong. And they will all give an account to God. Every one of us will stand before the Lord and give an account for every action that we have ever done. Those people that you thought got off the hook, they're not off the hook. God sees all things. He knows all things. And everyone will be judged according to their deeds. And so you either stand before God and Jesus will say, he's mine. He's been forgiven. Or you'll stand before God and you'll have no defense. Yep. And you'll pay the price for that. And when you're walking, you know, it's 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 not so glamorous as it looks when you're not walking with the Lord, with, you know, when you don't have a relationship with Jesus because you're living in sin, which sin just means, you know, you're missing the mark. It's like if you're going to, you know, get a gun and shoot it at the, you know, the bullseye and you're, you're, you keep make, you, you keep hitting it off a little bit to the right or whatever. You're missing the bullseye. You're missing the mark. Perfection. You're missing perfection, right? And what's going on is that when you live that life, in sin, whatever it be, I mean, you don't have to be like a crazy, like, I'm doing cocaine every night in strippers, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But like, if you're just like not walking with God and your little white lies to come up in the, in the, in the, um, in the, uh, uh, like in your business, you know, or you're overcharging the insurance company with this, all these little things that don't seem like this big stuff, that's still lies, you're still cheating. 
All these things, you know, these are all sins. And what happens is when you live this life of sin, whether you're like a crazy, like a, a crazy, dirty sinner the way I used to be really bad, or you're just kind of like a white lie, you know, doing your thing. At the end of the day, there's still guilt. There's still shame. There's still stuff that comes along with that that you carry. And you're, it's not glamorous at all. You're, you're, you're still always going to have that in the back of your head. Because the Holy Spirit's always drawn man to himself. So he's always, the job of the Holy Spirit is to convict the world of sin, right? So that's the whole thing is you don't, even if you're not walking with God, you have free choice to do whatever you want. Go with God or go without God. But even if you're living a life right now without God, even if you get rich and you make tons of money, you're still going to be empty. You're still going to have no hope. You're, you don't know where you go when you die. That's the probably the scariest part. Like me, I have so much insurance with my family because if something goes wrong with business, something goes wrong with my car, I want insurance. And people, it's it's really crazy how people could get so blinded, and I was one of them big time, that you're so blinded by sin because we know the sin, the wages of sin is death, but it's not only death like you're going to die from, but eternally death like you will go to hell. And it talks about hell in the Bible. There's the gnashing of teeth, the fire. Hell was made for the demons. And people just go out and live every single day. And again, I'm guilty as charged, blinded by the enemy, living, thinking that they're going to, you know, they're going to live for, you know, they're, that they're never going to die. But what happens is they have no insurance on eternal life. And that's what a relationship with Jesus Christ is, that he came on, came out of the eternity died on the cross, forgave mankind. By us believing in him, he writes our name in the book of life. And as long as we abide in Christ, as long as we are connected to the vine and we produce good fruit, then our name is written in the book of life. But I want to ask you a question now that we're talking about this. Yeah. So what if someone right now is listening on the radio and they go, all right, well, you know, once saved, always saved. Like I gave my life to Jesus before. But yeah, I can, can I guess that here this is the better question for the listeners. Once you give your life to Jesus Christ, are you always saved or is there a possibility of not being saved? Yeah, that's a great question and a lot of people ask that. You know, it's a very very popular question where here here here's the bottom line. You know, usually I'll I'll have somebody come and and talk to me and say, "Hey, you know, I, I gave my life to Jesus, but I'm scared. I don't know if I'm really saved." Yeah. And and they're they're freaked out about it. You know, they're really troubled. And so I'll ask them, I'm like, "Well, did you profess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior? Like, did you ask Jesus to 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 fill you and and to be in charge of your life?" Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I say, "Well, okay. Well, do you do you um do you have a desire to go to heaven?" Yeah, man, that's why I'm all troubled about this, you know? And then I said, thirdly, I I would ask them and and I would say, well, do you have a desire to please the Lord? Yes. Yeah, man, I want to please the Lord. I want to do what's right. That's why I'm so just, you know, upset about this. You know, I want to make sure I am going to heaven. And so, you know, based upon the people that I've spoken to and even a person that comes to me concerned about their salvation, I, I would have to say, you know, from my perspective, I believe that you're saved. And this is why. Number one, you profess that Jesus is, is Lord. That, that's scriptural. Number two, you have a desire to please the Lord. Somebody that's not a Christian is going to care less about, you know, pleasing God and living their life for the Lord. So that's something you have. That's something that the Holy Spirit gives you. You know, and thirdly, like, you know, I, I think this is what kind of brings it all about. You want to go to heaven. I want to please the Lord. And I put my faith in Jesus. I said, okay, great. Then I think you can rest assured. Keep going forward. Keep doing the best job that you can. Now, there are people that will come and maybe a harvest crusade or people that have come on a Monday night, gave their life to the Lord. Maybe somebody comes to, a, you know, an outreach that, that, that you do and they give their life to the Lord. But, you know, as we were studying, you know, with the John the Baptist series, they showed no signs of repentance. Yep. And this is a key because somebody can go forward at an altar call or at an event or at an event and, you know, raise their hand or, or whatever it might be. But the key step is repentance, mm-hmm. which really just means to go in the complete opposite direction. So instead of pursuing a life of sin, you are now turning and pursuing a life of holiness. And that's imperative. Like you cannot follow Jesus while you are following your sinful ways. That's why Jesus said, you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. You have to get off of the freeway 
and then get back on going on in the opposite direction. And so somebody that would come and say, hey, you know, I gave my life to Jesus, but they're living in sin. Uh, They've never repented. They are doing everything that a non-Christian would do. I would tell that person, I would not be comfortable if I were you. That's what I would tell them. Yeah, yes, because we know the stories like Jesus says, whosoever believe shall have everlasting life. Mm Because all you have to do, the simplicity of the gospel Mm -hmm. is you have to just believe by faith. But you know what's Mm -hmm. so funny is it sounds so simple, but that's like one of the hardest things to do. Sure. Oh, because it's the full it's it's foolishness that the the scriptures talked about. It's foolishness mm-hmm. to the world that Jesus came out of eternity to die on the cross for the sins of the world. It sounds like foolishness, but the hardest thing is to believe. But also going back to John the Baptist in that series that you're talking about, he says like prove it by the way you live. Yeah, prove that you've repented of your sins, and that's mm-hmm. that what you're talking about. That's that supernatural work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's in us. That gives us those, it produces the fruit, it produces desires right. to go after Christ, to want to right. change, to want to change um, our ways. Right. But I want to bring up this verse. <clears throat> um, it says in Leviticus eleven forty five. it says, I am the Lord who brought you up out of the land of Egypt that I might be your God. Therefore, be holy because I am holy. Now, I love this verse. Because this is uh, in in the world that you and I are in, we're we're evangelists, you know, Bible teacher evangelists. Um, we're always reaching people, and we're trying to get them out of the world. Well, here's the Israelites in the land of Egypt. Egypt represents the world, you know. I mean, when you think about it, that's where witchcraft came from. I mean, it was it was crazy over there. They were in bondage in Egypt to the world. God said, "Hey, I'm going to take you to the land of milk and honey. We got to go." Right? He he brings them out, but in the middle of that that time of them going to the wilderness i'm um, going to the promised land they kept looking back oh man it was so amazing in egypt and basically what what god's saying here is is like hey i'm the one that brought you up out of the world like me he brian i brought you up out of the land i brought you up out of slavery you were bondage to pornography you were bondage to drugs and alcohol you were bondage to sex you were bondage to i mean i mean anger bitterness like uh, just all that stuff you were in bondage, so now I brought you out. Don't look back, but now you must be holy as I am holy. Basically, don't go back. The, the Proverbs talks about don't be uh, like the dog. Like the dog goes back to its vomit, so the fool repeats his foolishness. So for us, if we give our life to Christ, true repentance proving is the way you live, and it's not the way you live outwardly. It's the way that you live out in the streets. And the way you live back at home behind closed doors. That's right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. Yeah. Because it's not like Jesus is just in the streets. Yeah. Like he's there in your room. Yep. He's there everywhere you go. He's there when when you're turning on your computer late at night and yep. doing your thing. Yeah. No, absolutely. And I think if you know, for those that are listening tonight, and maybe they've they've uh, tripped up, or maybe maybe you you've you know fallen into sin somehow. I want you to know that this is for you especially, that God saw every mistake you'd ever make before you were even born, and he still sent his own son, Jesus, to die on the cross for you. And now's not the time to wallow in your sin. Now's not the time to come under the condemnation of Satan, because Satan, Satan likes it both ways. Honestly, he'll, he'll try to lure you into sin, and then once you sin, he'll say, how could you do that? God, God's you know angry at you now. Yep. And so I, I want you to know that Jesus is reaching out to you tonight, There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So don't continue living after the lust of the flesh. Confess your sins to God, and he'll be faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Because we're not not perfected yet. I mean, we we all make mistakes. But the issue is this. If you are calling yourself a Christian and you're living in habitual sin, that is a problem. And I, I I don't mean to burst your bubble but maybe it needs bursting. Like you, you, you need to understand that if you're living in habitual sin and you're doing things that are against God, and it's not just the one-off, oh, I lost my temper or, or I made a mistake, but this is your lifestyle, then you're not in a good place. You need to remove yourself from that place. You need to repent from your sin and you need to pursue the Lord with all of your heart and he'll honor you for honoring him. Repenting is a great thing. I love it. You ask for forgiveness with the blood that was shed on the cross. You're washed white as snow. You have insurance. So if you take your last breath, 
it's it's all good. And not only that, God wants to give you your marching orders. He wants to direct you in life. He wants to give you peace. He wants to give you rest. He wants to give you purpose. This is the communication, the relationship that he desires. But we're not robots. So you have free will and you go after it. Um, we are. We have a couple calls. I'm going to go ahead and how many minutes do we have left before break? We got four and a half minutes here. Okay, let's go ahead and grab this call from, uh, let's go ahead and grab this from Terry in Hemet, California. Terry, how you doing tonight? What is your question? Hello? Hey, how you doing? What What's your question tonight, Terry? Hi, sorry. I, I'm up here on the mountain, so we just drop, dump some stuff out here by me, um, <laughs> out by my property. Um, I was just calling in because I'm just having... <sighs> I'm just having a lot of heartache with my kids, just not walking right with the Lord and not, um, just being in the world and, you know, it's just really, it's just really heartbreaking for this mom here. And I know that other parents have dealt with this and, and I'm supposed to continue praying and I do and. It's just very, it's hard. I'm going to let uh, Garrett jump in. Yeah, hi, hi Terry. I, it, it, in one, of the, one of the hardest things to, to deal with is, is watching somebody that you care about heading down a path that is destructive. You know, I know a lot of parents that have have wept over their children and that their heart breaks just because you know what God's Word says. You know the things that are coming down the pike for those that want to live rebellious against the Lord. And it's so hard, you know, to watch that happen. And, and, and it's heartbreaking, I think, especially as a mom. But I, I want you to know that your prayers are heard by the Lord. And I can't tell you, I just want to encourage you because it even happened in my own family where, you know, one of my my siblings had walked away from the Lord uh, for 10 years and uh, my parents prayed for him over and over and over again and for every day just prayed and prayed and prayed. He was his own man. He needed to make his own decisions. He needed to have his own relationship with the Lord. He couldn't have it vicariously through his parents or his family members. He needed to have it on his own. And though he was raised in the same house, he he went off the rails. But, you know, the amazing, miraculous thing that took place was that all of those prayers, all those tears that were shed, uh, the Lord heard them, the Lord saw them, and we we are so, so pleased that, that my brother came back to the Lord. Uh, he, he, he's walking with the Lord today. He's married. He has three beautiful kids. He's the spiritual leader of his home. And there was just a real, real time in his life that he was in a bad place. But the Lord redeemed it. And so I just want to encourage you, every time you start to feel overwhelmed and you feel feel saddened, Bring it to the Lord because the Lord cares about your children even more than you do. And his heart breaks for his kids that are hurting. And I know that if you keep praying and if you keep being that witness and keep encouraging your kids, that the word of God will never return void. And you're going to see great things happen in the future. And we'll pray for that as well. Awesome. Thank you. Can I have the name of that church that you lead and what city it's in? Yeah, it's in Irvine. It's called Vision City Church, and it's visioncitychurch.com if you'd like to get more info on it. All right, awesome. Right on. Tomorrow at 1030, Sunday morning, we'll be there partying with uh, the family. Come down, come on, come all. All right, we're going to be taking uh, more questions right after break. I do want to plug the Kill the Noise book. I have a book coming out. Check out Amazon, Target, Walmart, Barnes & Nobles, all, all your spots where you buy books. It's out. You could pre-order it now. It's going to teach you how to kill the noise, repent, find that purpose, be filled with the Spirit, and live that life you were created for. We are also booking the, uh, the Whosoever's mega tour across the United States. Hit us up at thewhosoever's.com. We are going to be taking the United States by storm with the gospel of Christ, John the Baptist style. Hit us up. We love you guys. Talk to you in two minutes right after the break. More. 
of The Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. Now, back, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, we're doing this tonight with Garrett Beeler. He's the pastor of Vision Church Irvine, and they do Sunday morning services at 1030. And we're going to be there partying tomorrow. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Great first uh, half of the show, Ryan. Awesome. Hey, thanks for uh, coming on. It's always epic when you're here. And it's your six-year anniversary of doing the show. I can't believe it. Man, look at that gray hair. It's flowing. Gosh. Long gray hair. Look at this. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let me give the number out because uh, we need to get some more calls in here. 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. We want to take your guys' calls. Um, we have a couple calls lined up. Let's go ahead and grab this one right here. We got Ryan from San Diego. What up, man? How you doing? Hey, doing good. How are you guys? Awesome, man. What's your uh, question tonight? Man, if I don't remember. Oh, um, it's like, oh, is it better to be, is it better to think that I want to be like Jesus? You know what I mean? Like, I, or is it like better to just be myself? You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it does. Like, sh- you're basically, okay. how should you live your life, right? Well, when you, yeah. when you, when you read the Bible... God gives us the, he just gives us the way to live. He, he teaches us how to live. And Jesus came, we were talking about before the break, he came to planet Earth and he went to show people what it was to, to live your life with a relationship with God. All the examples are in there. The prayer, the fasting, the, how he dealt with mankind, how he dealt with dead religion, how he dealt with um, the poor. And, you know, it's, everything's there. Yes, Jesus is the standard. He is per, okay. he's perfection. He's perfect. He is uh, he is the model because if you try to if you try to just be yourself, you know who got yourself. It's it's like that whole saying, um, the self help books. Well, who got you in yeah. uh, the in, in problems in the first place? It's yourself. You know, <laughs> My, it's myself for sure. But <laughs> um, yeah, and I think you know what? I'll just speak into this. Look at this is the deal. When you when you're reading the Bible and you're having that relationship with God and you, you ha- you're having the intimacy, like you really want to know him, he starts changing those desires of your, of your, of the past ways. 
And he shows you who you really are. He shows you who your real identity is. And that's where you find security. And that's where the self-doubt leaves. And that's where all the confusion of the things of the world. And I'm not saying that you're going to turn into this little, this weirdo Christian guy. No, that's not it. You're going to be more of who you are because Jesus created you for a specific plan here on earth and all those desires and all those, you know, wants as in not, and not like those things that you love in your life. He put those desires in there and he wants to develop them and he wants to grow them. But it all comes through a relationship with Christ, reading the word of God. And then what happens is through the living water, of the Holy Spirit, you grow uh, in the faith. And that's, that's basically how you need to roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And Ryan, just to hop in there real quick, too. It's a good question, though. Because God created you uh, in such a unique way, you, the best version of you is going to be found by following Jesus. So so the best version of yeah. you is, is going to be submitting your life to Jesus. And so, you know, in, in kind of a different angle, angled approach of, of answering your question, God created you to know him. God created you to to be victorious over the lust of the flesh. He, he created you to live holy as, as, as he is holy, as Ryan read uh, right. just a few moments ago. And so I would just encourage you that your personality and who God created you to be will reach its peak following Jesus. So you keep right. seeking Jesus first, his kingdom, his righteousness, knowing that all these other things shall be added unto you. And then you'll, you'll be set, man. Right on. And I do, I do want to plug this. In my new book that's coming out, Kill the Noise, I have a chapter called Identity Crisis. And Identity Crisis is the, the transformation from the old man to the new man. And it basically breaks down of like, you know, to be Christ-like and what that transition looks like and the things of the old that are still haunting you and, and pulling you in. But then you're, you're looking at that new spirit-led life and you're, you're kind of in the middle and you're trying to figure out, you know, am I becoming corny or I want to be, you know, who I, I don't want to become a cornball Christian. I want to be, I want to be Christ-like. And what's interesting as, as we're talking about this, Garrett, you know, about the whole Christ-like, like, look at Jesus for a minute. Dude, he was radical. I mean, he went in and he, he went to the temples and he taught the scriptures, right? He broke over the scriptures and that's, we have to be men and women of the word of God. Then he would go through the, it says he would go from town to town, village to village. And who knows what you're going to run into? I was in Venice Beach earlier today for, for an outreach. Dude, talking about freak show, just crazy, like oh, yeah. anything goes there, right? Yeah. Anyway, so here's Jesus. And I was talking to one of the guys there that was doing the outreach. I said, Jesus went from town to town and city to city. You don't know what you're going to run into in the cities. But it shows that Jesus would be in the big, in the big cities in Jerusalem. Then he'd be out in the, the, the Sea of the Gentiles from town to town, city to city, <clears throat> casting out demons. I mean, dude, how the, the, the demoniac, like, that was a gnarly scene in the Bible. But then you see him breaking bread. You know, with Matthew and them and all these notorious sinners it talks about in the scriptures, there's many of these notorious sinners around Jesus. Then he has the girl Mary Magdalene that had like seven demons in her. Like, what the heck was she into? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus's character yeah. was, I mean, the more you learn about him, you really, you're going to have an edge. Oh, yeah. You know, he's not this like soft like yeah. he was soft in those moments, like when that woman came up to him, and and they, this the, the Pharisees, the religious people, were like, "Look, at, we caught her uh, in adultery, the act of mm -hmm. adultery." But he was soft in that moment and just showed there was grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. But then he was radical to all the religious guys. Yeah, he was the perfect balance. Yeah, like compassion where compassion was yeah. needed, and you know, serious when seriousness was needed, and you know, he loved the children. He loved the children coming to him and hearing from him. Yeah. He was breaking bread and, you know, speaking to the multitudes yeah. out on the hillside. So I think with Jesus, what we see today is that he can meet you yep. wherever you're at. Yep. And it doesn't matter what you're into or how far gone you may be. Jesus is still there for you. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's one of the most amazing things. And that's that's why we want to be like Jesus. We want the heart of God. And when you, when, you, when you just watch the model, because he is the model, when we watch the model of the way he lived his life, and if you actually pursued what you read on the scriptures, like I just, 
I just have that kind of like childlike faith. Like I read the Bible and I'm like, okay, you can do that. I believe that. That's what he did. So that's my model. Like that's how I live my life when I'm in the streets at Starbucks, gas station meeting with people. If I see someone in need or if I'm out doing evangelism or whatever, I'm always doing evangelism wherever I go. But um, the model is when you're following Jesus's way, the way he li- he lived, your life will be exciting and you're going to find your identity and you're going to be secure in it. And you're not going to be looking at the things of the world. He is the model and he is the way. So he's just go read the scriptures and you're going to, you're going to be just like, be just like him. That's the model. All right, let's uh, go ahead and grab this next one. We got Jason here in Hemet, California. What's up, Jason? Good evening, guys. I, I have a pretty good question for you. So I, I work with one of my coworkers. He's a he's a pretty big proponent to uh, what I believe in such as anything Orthodox Christianity. And his biggest thing that he always tells me about, he skips over the, the creation argument and all that, and his biggest thing that keeps him from believing is the fact that there's different ethnicities. And he says if we have a common ancestor, how could we possibly have different ethnicities and such? So I try to explain to him how Adam and Eve and how they had many children and such. So I was curious, if by the time of Noah, uh, by the time of the flood, do you think that Noah's children had, like, maybe some of their spouses were of de- different ethnicity or they were all the same? And where did these ethnicities, and uh, not necessarily races, because we're all the human race, but where do these ethnicities come from? That's a good question. Yeah, no, that, that is a great, great question, just to hop in. Well, we know that Noah and his family repopulated the earth, yeah. and so that's what the scriptures tell us from history. Um, Adam, as you know, he had all the DNA uh, of all of mankind, uh, you know, within him. Uh, and, and if your if your friend is going to go back to, you know, okay, well, what about ethnicities? According to what the Bible says, it just says that Noah and his family repopulated uh, the the earth, and so we are led to believe that each of those three sons, Ham, Shem, and Jepheth. Uh, were the fathers of what we what we see today as as the different races and obviously as as people gather together um, in different areas and congregate in different areas and travel to different areas around around the country and around the world rather um, you know you, you would start to see certain traditions you would start to see certain ways of life you would start to see. Uh, certain architecture and arts and music and things that would be unique to that to that area. But there's really not a complicated answer to it. You know, it's just what we know from the scriptures is that those three sons were the ones that ended up repopulating the earth. And so that would lead us to believe that what was within them as uh, as as they had children uh, led to the different ethnicities that we see today. You know, I was thinking gotcha. about, thank you, Jason. I was thinking about um, Tower of Babel and all that happened, all the different languages, and everyone kind of uh, dispersed into different areas of the United States. I mean, not in the United States, of the, of the continents of the world. All right, let's go ahead and grab, uh, we have Al out of Rancho Cucamonga, California. What is good, Al? What's your question tonight? Hey, pastors, how you doing, gentlemen? Thank you for taking my call. I'm um, kind of at odds right now. I'm, you know, I've been out on the streets driving all day. My wife dropped a bomb on me after 42 years, and my heart's broken. And I don't know, you know, we go to we go to church. Well, since the COVID thing, we we we've, we've been watching it online. And, uh, you know, we pray every night. We read the Bible every day. We're going through the Bible, and we reference, and we do all that. And I'm I'm very, very confused as to why this is all going on. And I just don't know what to do, guys. I, I'm, you know, I'm parked in my driveway right now here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm at odds. I... I don't know why or where or what's going on. So I just, I'm calling for prayer for my marriage, basically, that that this storm would end. Let me, I'm going to pray for you. Um, I've been on several phone calls recently, 
And, you know, we know that during the, the pandemic, it shut everything down and everyone got grounded at home. And when you're on the run, when there's issues, and I'm not saying, I'm not talking about you and your wife or whatever, but just when there's issues in relationships and you're on the grind, you're working, you're going to work every day and she's doing her thing with the kids and she's going to sports or I don't know, whatever, you know, people do. And all of a sudden the pandemic hits and you put these people together, (laughs) these people that are married. And all of a sudden it's like, you have to face the music of whatever, like past doubt or past pain or stuff that never got resolved. All of a sudden it all kind of just comes up and, and there's all these feelings and all the stuff that's happening because there are people aren't basically caught up in all the noise of life and busy. So they actually have to face what's, what's really going on in the relationship. And this is what I've heard. And again, this isn't, I, I don't know anything about you, Al. I'm just talking about in general of conversations I've had with several people that are married and they're, they're thinking about separation. They're uh, thinking about divorce. Um, I've heard this over and over and over. And all I know is that, you know, prayer is, is powerful and we have to know that God's in control and you literally have to give it to God and pray that he has his way between you and your wife. Again, I don't know anything about you. So, I mean, this is probably like a, this is like a sit down counseling meeting to, to find out more, but I'm going to pray for you now and your wife. What, uh, actually don't give me her name. All right. In Jesus name, I pray for Al and his wife. We don't know what's going on, but you know, every single detail that's going on. What is causing this and what um, is happening currently in this situation? But I pray in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus on this relationship, that God, that you will intervene and that you will bring unity wherever there is fogginess, uh, you know, where she maybe she's not thinking clear. Whatever is happening that is causing this division, we just ask in Jesus' name that you just remove it. And you bring clarity to the relationship, God, and that you bring unity and bring them back together, Lord, and that you do it in your timing. And during this time, I pray in Jesus' name that you uh, speak to Al and her. um, I don't know how you want to speak to her audibly, through the word, through dreams, whatever you want to do, Lord. Get their attention. Give peace. Bring clarity to this whole situation. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. We love you, Al, okay? Hey, um, go, uh, I mean, I don't know where you're at. You're in Rancho. We're at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar up at my dad's church, Raul Reese. Contact them. Uh, they, they're they open. They're having people there. You can go meet with someone and, and get some counseling and some prayer. Please do that. Uh, there's obviously no charge. Just get there, call them, and uh, start with that. And Sunday, tomorrow's Sunday. So just go, show up tomorrow. There's plenty of pastors there. All right, bro. Thank you. All right, brother. See ya. Yeah, you know, the, the Lord has a very um, special way in drawing his kids to himself. And it's usually not until you have those crazy kind of times that you realize, hey, maybe I need to change something or maybe I have allowed things to slip too long. But nothing is ever beyond the power of God to restore or to redeem. And so maybe there's other people out there tonight, Ryan, that may have marital problems. They're feeling discouraged. They're feeling yep. bummed out. They feel like they've blown it. They have that sinking pit feeling in their stomachs. You know, I, I think they need to know tonight that nothing is impossible for God, that, that, that your marital problems are not too big for the Lord, and that if the Lord has brought these things to your attention and maybe now things are starting to play themselves out in a way that you're not liking because maybe you made some bad decisions, maybe you neglected your relationship with the Lord or whatever it might be. If God has your attention right now, then he wants you to seek him and to seek his will and to ask for his strength and his restoration. And like Ryan said, I, I think it's very important to find a church in your area, meet with a pastor, have some good biblical marital counseling, and let's see the good things that the Lord can do. This is definitely a uh, an issue. I it's I keep hearing it over and over. I'm gonna give the number out. We do have uh, about 15 minutes left. Triple eight five six four six one seven three. Triple eight five six four six one seven three. And if you're like me and you got ADD, I'm gonna give the number out one more time. Triple eight 
564-6173. I remember I'd be listening to Pastor's Perspective. They'd give the number out. Wait, what was it? You, couldn't they just say it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. So good. All right, we got we got a uh, phone number coming in. So, Garrett, uh, what's another thing that is – oh, so let me tell you why this phone line's coming in. So I went to uh, – Went to Venice Beach. It's been crazy because, you know, I t- told you I've been listening to your John the Baptist series. And, you know, God's been really speaking to me through it. And I today I was I was at home and one of my friends texted. Actually, I had three different guys text me about this outreach in Venice Beach. And God always works in threes with me. So I got them at different times. And I'm like, God, what are you? I'm like, it doesn't make sense. I got the radio tonight. I'm not going all the way to Venice Beach. That's like two hours from my house. And I got another one, another one. It was three. And then I'm like, oh, my gosh. I'm like, I guess you want me to go there. I'm like, this is stupid. Why am I going to Venice Beach? Like, I need to just kick back and study and relax. Finish Garrett's uh, series yeah. of John the Baptist. It sounds like a great idea. Anyway, dude, I'm driving up there. And I'm going to drive up there. And I pull off the freeway once. And I'm like, I'm not going. And then I get back on the freeway. And I pull off again twice. And then I pull off the third time. No and I'm way. like, I'm not going. I'm late. I forget this. This is a stupid idea. So then my uh, my wife, I, oh, I called my wife, Crystal, and she's like, are you going to go up there? I'm like, no, no, I'm late. This is stupid. She's like, just go. So I'm like, Bird, I just pin it. So I go all the way to Venice Beach. I get parking front row to the event, thank God. But uh, I get there, and I'm sitting there. I'm just kind of talking to all these. They're all electronic. It's all like an EDM event right okay. there. Like they're just like, boosh, boosh, you know, uh-huh. doing it. Yep. And uh, praying with people and the whole thing. And um, long story short, I'm just kind of sitting there, and, this guy comes up to me, and he's like, hey, where are you from? He's from Huntington, I guess, and I'm telling him from down here. And, and then we start talking, and all of a sudden, dude, he just gives me a prophetic word. And I'm like, literally, it was like everything that God, this is what I forgot to say, everything that God was confirming, th- the verses, the things, through all your messages, he basically like laid it out. I've never met this guy in my life, but he was like, so check this out. This is what God's showing me. And I've never met him. He's like, blink, 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 and this verse, and ding, 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 and this verse. And I was like, what the heck? Yes. Like, God had me drive all the oh, way I up there for it. this moment just to confirm everything that was resonating with me through that series. I love it. But uh, you That's know, it's how just, big God is. He cares about the little details. And, and he'll do the craziest things when you're obedient to him. Good on Crystal telling you, Psh, <laughs> go. He, yeah, it was, she hasn't even heard the story yet. Because right when I got home, I took a little uh, little nap before I came to the radio show. I'm like, I need like 20 minutes. But what's crazy is God makes you do some crazy things sometimes. Like I drove all the way to Venice Beach. Yep. And I, was, I wouldn't have gone if I would have got the one flyer. But I had three different guys from three different parts of the United States that were spinning at this event here in Venice Beach. Anyway... Lord's Just, will. But that's all spirit led, and that's God does cool stuff. I love the Holy Spirit. I love how, I know. how He works. All right, here we go. I, we got a Holy Spirit question coming in right now. All right, we got a call coming in from Oceanside. How are you doing tonight? Hi, I'm Elma. doing good. So, what is your question tonight? Because we have a few minutes left and we want to get to it. Yeah, no worries. So, um, the Holy Ghost is something I've been praying for, and I know it's something my pastor preaches all the time, you know, like pray for the Holy Ghost. Um, yeah. he, he, you know, he's like, you need the Holy Ghost. Um, you know, if I, if you don't have it, make sure you're praying every night. And I mean, I, I can say just being honest, like I, I, you know, I'm forgetful and I, I don't pray every night as, as I should, but, um, I guess what my question is, is what was your experience going through that? And like, when you received it, like how, how, how much work or effort did you, I mean, not work or effort, but did yeah. it take a long time for it to actually happen? Okay. No, that's a very good question. So I'm just, I'm just struggling and like feeling a little frustrated because okay. it hasn't happened. I want to, I want to tell you a book to buy. It's by Chuck Smith. It It's called Living Water. Chuck Smith, Living Water. It's a book on the Holy Ghost. Okay. Okay. Get that for sure. I recommend everyone that that book actually led my wife to the Lord. <laughs> so amazing. Uh, but listen, so I when you give your life to Jesus Christ, you receive the Holy Spirit. He's in you, right? Right. But what mm-hmm. the thing with the pastor's talking? So if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit in you. The, what the pastor's talking about? He's talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit or the upon experience. It's in Acts one eight. Jesus, the disciples, they received the Holy Spirit because Jesus blew on them. They received the Holy Spirit, but they didn't have the power because you look at Peter and he was dropping the ball. He was blowing it over and over three times right before when Jesus was going to get crucified. 
they didn't have the power. So he said, before you go up and tear it up and live the Great Commission, you need to go to Jerusalem. You need to post up. You need to wait. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when he gets, when he baptizes you or when he fills you, that upon experience, that's when you receive that power, that dunamis power for the, for, and that's when the gifts of the Holy Spirit will come because when you receive the power, the person of the Holy Spirit, then he starts manifesting the gifts in your life. So I would have people go somewhere where there's pastors, tell them to anoint you with oil and tell them to lay their hands on you and tell them that you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when I got back, or, or just pray for it, I, I didn't even get baptized with the Holy Spirit from the laying on of hands. I was actually at my friend Michael Guido's house, and I was it was, right, it was a, like six months after I got saved, and I was listening to some worship, and, and I was just listening to worship, and dude, I just felt this power of the Holy Spirit come upon me, and it was so intense that literally I was like, God, stop like what the heck is this stop stop it it was so intense that i literally took my headphones off with worship and i put it down and i was like saying telling jesus to stop but that's not for everybody some have powerful encounters and some just receive it because jesus when you read the scriptures he works differently in different times you know in in acts i think acts 22 or something it just says that he was speaking and the holy spirit fell upon them and then in Acts 1-8, they were just sitting there, and the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Then there was other times when they put their hands on them and prayed for them, and it says that they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So there is different ways. So for me, I, I try, I'll try everything. Lay your hands on me. I'll pray for it. I'll ask for it. And God does it in his timing, and he will send it. So we have I don't know how many minutes we have left, but I'm going to pray for you right now. We have one minute. In Jesus' name, I pray for Alma. Lord, yes, Lord, split the sky, send your Holy Spirit, baptize her with the fire and the power of the Holy Spirit. You said, if you ask anything in my name, it will be done, Lord. You said, knock, knock, and the door will be open. So in Jesus' name, God, I pray that you will baptize her with the Holy Spirit, that she will literally encounter your presence, and she will start operating in the power, not only through the Word, reading the Word, but operating in the power of their Spirit and with the gifts of the Spirit, God. Lord, send it, fill her, and Holy Spirit, come upon her. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We love you, all right? Get that book, Living Water by Chuck Smith. All right. I don't know. I think we lost her. But check it out, guys. We have 30 seconds left. Go to thewhosoevers.com. Book us for a tour. Grab the Kill the Noise book. It's a tool to disciple you and to get you on the Great Commission. Garrett, thank you. Hey. Good night. God bless. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday for The Ryan Reese Show.